The most destructive weapon that humanity can create isn't nuclear, nor antimatter. It's not even biological. It's dropping rocks from space. That's right, nothing beats the annihilating power of dropping matter from orbit onto unsuspecting landmasses below. It causes no radiation and it can't be detected until it's too late. It is so versatile and incredible that it's a miracle no country has yet deployed a kinetic bombardment system. Or have they? Today on Escape Velocity, we will be discussing the incredible destructive power of orbital bombardment and how the U.S. might have put such a system in orbit called Project Thor. Be prepared to witness the power of the rods from God. The idea of dropping a heavy weight from above is a concept as old as time itself with examples like siege warfare from the medieval period to small munitions dropped from planes and balloons in World War I. But it wasn't until the Korean War that it became its own type of ballistic, called a kinetic projectile. Also known as a lazy dog bomb or flechette, it was a simple piece of sheet metal folded over itself into the shape of a conventional bomb. When dropped on enemy troops, it could have the same effect as a large caliber machine gun, penetrating up to nine inches of concrete, all thanks to gravity. This concept sparked the minds of those working on the US nuclear program at Boeing, as it solved one of the major problems of strategic defense, the fight against gravity. After all, if the Soviets launched nuclear rockets toward the United States, a ground-based defense system would have to launch itself to get up to the incoming rockets. However, if the defense systems were already in orbit and could launch using gravity, they would simply fall down to intercept the USSR's weapons before they could deploy any decoys or get within striking distance. This system was dubbed Smart Rocks and ticked all the boxes. As part of Reagan's Star Wars defense program, it would put the US countermeasures in low Earth orbit away from any EMP strikes, making it hard to target with conventional weapons and having no radar signature. Plus, once up there, it would require very little fuel to maintain. During the presidency of George H.W. Bush, it would evolve into a program called Brilliant Pebbles and be used as a cornerstone of the U.S. defense network. However, there were some flaws with the idea. The system itself would be more expensive to build and put into use than the enemy's ability to launch an interception strike and take out the platform. Essentially, if the enemy can handle it better than you can dish it out, it's useless. Combined with the cost of an additional ground-based system, it ended up being a multi-billion dollar program that would only last 10 years with a complex decommissioning phase. You wouldn't accidentally want any of these space rocks to miss the landing zone as you broke apart the station. Or would you? You see, so far, we've been discussing the use of these kinetic weapons as defense tools to intercept Russian nukes. But what if they were used as offensive weapons instead? This is exactly what the US government came up with in 2003 with an Air Force project called the Hypervelocity Rod Bundle. The idea was simple. A space station would have a few long rods made of incredibly dense material, such as tungsten, which they would drop onto enemy targets as the station flew over with a few adjustments during flight. This six meter or 20 foot long rod would drop at a speed of Mach 10 through the atmosphere, going from launch to impact in only 12 to 15 minutes. Upon impact, it would transfer all its orbital kinetic energy into the explosion with a yield similar to a small tactical nuclear bomb or about 11 and a half tons of TNT without the radiation. This is fantastically economical when compared to the weight of the rod around 8.2 metric tons. 
The shape of the kinetic projectile was chosen to be an elongated rod to increase its penetrative abilities, to be able to hit mountain nuclear shelters with ease and be a true bunker buster. With such a fast closing velocity and a tiny radar cross section, not even any emissions, it would be nearly impossible to detect and defend against. If, say, the United States had a series of 8 to 10 of these stations in orbit, they would be able to strike any location within 15 minutes after command. That's half the time it would take for a traditional ICBM. In order to secure the station, the stations themselves would be equipped with sensors to detect any anti-ballistic weapons or anti-satellite weapons to move out of the way in time. Failing that, it would also need some anti-missile rockets or a large megawatt laser on board that could melt incoming warheads. The whole insane project was given the nickname Rods from God and would render nearly all other forms of warfare obsolete. Well, kind of. You'll see there are some major flaws. One of the biggest is how you get the tungsten rods up there in the first place. It would require a ton of fuel to get them into orbit, and then you would require a ton of fuel to get them out of orbit. While some media have portrayed the dropping of these space objects as just that, dropping, it's actually far more difficult. The rods would have to use an almost equal amount of fuel to dislodge themselves from orbital velocity, and even more to target a specific part of the world. After all of this, you'd wonder if you should swap out the tungsten rod from the launching rocket with a simple nuclear warhead instead and there were political issues too. In 1967, the United States signed a treaty with the very original name of the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, which means no nukes, no offensive weapons in orbit or elsewhere, and by golly, they have stuck with it. It was put together by the US, Great Britain, and the former Soviet Union and has wide support from nations around the world. 111 countries are parties to the treaty, while another 23 have signed the treaty but have not completed ratification. So far, the US has stuck by this treaty, but this might be slowly changing. In 2018, President Donald Trump established the Space Force, a sixth branch of the armed forces, with the goal of not just having an American presence in space, but dominating it. In 2022, the Space Force requested to increase its budget to $17.4 billion, equal to more than 10% of the U.S. Air Force's $173.7 billion blue budget, and a $2 billion increase from 2021, with $800 million in classified funding. While we can't say for sure if any prototypes for the rods from God are planned, make no mistake, enemies of the US are watching very carefully to not be left behind. After all, Russia, China, and other spacefaring nations aren't going to just sit back and allow the US to become the master of space. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing.